In this video, I'm going to talk about everything you need to know if you're visiting Hong Kong Disneyland for the first time, from the rides that you need to prioritize, characters, hotels, how to book it, everything. Hi everyone, how's life and welcome to another one of my videos. Now, as you may know, I was in Hong Kong Disneyland about a month ago. I spent about four days there. All the vlogs from that trip are up on the channel now. And I thought in this video, I would share everything that I think a first time visitor might need to know before visiting Hong Kong Disneyland for the first time. So firstly, let's quickly talk a little bit about how to book Hong Kong Disneyland. Now, Hong Kong Disneyland has three on-site hotels, three official Disney hotels. You've got the Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel, which is their deluxe hotel. Then you've got the Explorers, which is their mid-range slash moderate hotel. And then also Disney's Hollywood Hotel, which is their value hotel. Hotel. All three of these on-site hotels are cheaper or more affordable than what you can find in the US parks or even Disneyland Paris. So personally, if you're a big Disney fan, I would recommend staying in one of these Disney hotels at least for one night. However, you don't have to because Hong Kong Disneyland is only about a 20 minute drive away from the airport and not too far from the city as well. So if you prefer to just stay inside Hong Kong and travel to Disneyland and back, you can do that as well. There's a train station literally outside Hong Kong Disneyland and very easy to use too. Now the benefits of staying on site aren't a lot unfortunately you don't get to have extra magic time or anything but they're very beautiful experiences it keeps you in the bubble and like i said they're not as expensive as what you might find in the u.s parks so when you go on the hong kong disneyland website if you choose to stay on site you can book your hotel stay first and then also you will have to add on your tickets for the park at the time of filming you can only book either a one day ticket or a two day ticket that's the maximum amount of days that you can do i think because hong kong disneyland is quite a small park they just don't anticipate visitors wanting to spend more than two days there however of course if you want to you can all you need to do is book multiples of the one or two day tickets. So I was there for four days, meaning that I personally booked myself two of the two day tickets and it was absolutely no problem. Once I got to my hotel in Hong Kong Disneyland, the cast member knew exactly what I'd booked and he made my reservations for me as well because you do need to make reservations for the dates that you're going in the park. However, if you're staying in a Disney official hotel, you're guaranteed entry. So you don't even have to worry about reserving the date that you're there once you've booked your tickets. Prices for the park tickets are also significantly lower than what you might find in the US parks or Disneyland Paris. And it does fluctuate depending on what time of year you go if you go during peak times of course it might be a little bit more expensive if you go during lower season it will be cheaper however from my understanding if you book the two-day pass it will be the same price more or less any time you go which is what i did now i personally stayed at both the hong kong disneyland hotel for a couple of nights and also the explorers i've done a full video tour of these two hotels as well as the disney hollywood hotel as well so if you want to check that out i'll leave the link down below so you can get a better understanding of which of the three hotels you might want to stay at now as i did mention earlier i was there for three nights four days which i think is more than enough for hong kong disneyland as somebody who vlogs I do often feel like I want to spend a little bit more time than if I wasn't vlogging because it gives me more opportunity to take all the details in and take my time filming everything that I want to as well however if you're visiting for the first time I think you will need between two to three days you can do it in one day don't get me wrong if you're visiting Hong Kong and you just have one day free that you want to spend at Disneyland you can do it you can definitely get all the main attractions done and have an amazing time because it's not a huge park by any means however I think most of us here are very huge Disney parks fans and I think for us for people who really want to appreciate all the little details and take it all in you might need at least two days I would say three days to be completely on the safe side but you can absolutely get everything done in two days there is only one park in Hong Kong Disneyland one park only and it's a Magic Kingdom style park so they've got the car and the layout of the park is also very similar to the other Disney castle parks if you've been to them you've got your Main Street USA your Tomorrowland your Fantasyland etc they've got a different name for their version of Frontierland but it's very much a similar concept I would say Hong Kong Disneyland actually looks the most like Disneyland California because I think that's kind of what they based it on when they made it one thing to note though about Hong Kong Disneyland is that it's the only Disney park that doesn't actually have a Disney Springs or Disney Village downtown Disney it just doesn't have a little district area where you can go for food and shopping outside of the park because that's something to bear in mind because if you're visiting Hong Kong Disneyland and if you're you know staying for a few days and you're thinking oh maybe one of the evenings I'll just spend in a downtown Disney area of it there's no such thing all your food and shopping options are going to be either in the park or in the hotels which anybody is free to visit the hotels even if you're not staying there so that's something to do if you don't want to stay in any of the hotels or if you're staying in one of the hotels but if you want to visit the other ones then you're absolutely free to do so and maybe check out some of the other restaurants in the hotels too now one very common question that I was asked plenty of times is is it difficult to navigate if you don't speak English no, absolutely not. In fact, I would say of the three Asian Disney parks, Hong Kong Disneyland is by far the easiest to navigate. Not only because one of the official languages of Hong Kong is English, so the majority of people will understand and speak English very well, but also because it's the smallest. So very, very easy. I would say if you're planning to go to Asia for the first time visiting all the Disney parks, start with Hong Kong. It's going to be so much easier than the other two. And that goes with the rides and shows as well. Inside the park, most of the rides and attractions have both Cantonese in them and English. So the two official languages of Hong Kong reflects into the parks as well. So again, 
again, very easy to understand all the attractions and shows. And again, the characters that you meet most likely will understand English very well. The shows are also going to be quite similar in the sense that they're going to be kind of half in Cantonese, half in English. Or if they're in Cantonese, they're all going to have subtitles for you to be able to read in English. Honestly, no problem whatsoever in terms of the language barrier in Hong Kong. Now let's talk about what rides you should prioritize if you're visiting Hong Kong Disneyland, especially if you're somebody visiting Hong Kong Disneyland who's been to the other Disney parks before. The number one ride in Hong Kong Disneyland, in my opinion, and for a lot of international guests visiting, is going to be Mystic Manor. Mystic Manor is a dark ride trackless attraction in the Mystic Point area of Hong Kong Disneyland and it was opened in 2013 so fun fact for you it was actually the very first trackless ride in any of the Disney parks worldwide the year after in 2014 Ratatouille opened in Disneyland Paris. But yeah this one's not 3D it's not like Ratatouille you don't need 3D glasses or anything it's more like if you've been to the Efteling very similar to Symbolica one of their main attractions in the Efteling. It's really really cool though and it's meant to be their version of the Haunted Mansion because in the Chinese culture they just don't believe in spirits or the afterlife like some of the western countries do. So because of that it's got more of a light-hearted theme to it it's more fantasy vibes and it's really really fun there's a monkey in the attraction called Albert and honestly the attraction is done very very well and it's one that doesn't often get very long queues because of the nature of the attraction it's kind of an omni mover it's constantly going so you don't need to necessarily rope drop it or worry about how you're going to get on it it very rarely gets queues any longer than 20-25 minutes but it's an attraction that I would say if you're visiting Hong Kong Disneyland you should definitely prioritize to do and you should definitely experience if you can I would even go as far as saying that if you're hoping to go to Hong Kong Disneyland and if you go on their website and see that Mystic Manor is going to be closed on the dates that you're visiting, maybe consider moving your trip to a different date. But Hong Kong Disneyland does have a few more fun attractions and unique to them as well. So of course, World of Frozen recently opened in Hong Kong Disneyland at the end of 2023. And at the time of filming, it's still the only World of Frozen out there. Of course, we are going to get something similar in Disneyland Paris, hopefully next year. But even so, their version of World of Frozen is going to be quite different to the one that we're going to get. They've got two rides there. They've got Frozen Ever After, which is very similar to Epcot's Frozen Ever After, except better. They've definitely upped the game there with the animatronics and the screen work and the drops are longer. They also have a really lovely quick service restaurant in their World of Frozen, some amazing snacks. I mean, one thing I actually really loved about their version of World of Frozen is the backdrop of it because Hong Kong just has so much beautiful nature around it anyway. And even when you first walk into the park and see the castle, which I'm going to talk about in a bit, you will see mountains behind the castle, something that is extremely unique and you can only really get in Hong Kong. It is beautiful and in World of Frozen it works particularly well because they already have some actual real mountains in that area. It blends in perfectly with the vibe of Arendelle and you know Elsa's castle and everything it's lovely they also do have a second ride in Hong Kong Disneyland's version of World of Frozen which is a very very short roller coaster about 30 seconds long not something that I necessarily think you're going to miss out on if you don't do however if you're already in Hong Kong Disneyland worth going on at least once because we're not going to get that in Disneyland Paris a few more attractions you might want to prioritize is I would say the entirety of Tomorrowland in Hong Kong Disneyland is quite unique it's very much Marvel focused their Space Mountain is hyperspace mountain constantly and it's not as good as our hyperspace mountain in Disneyland Paris but it's still definitely worth trying very similar to the version in California however in Tomorrowland they also do have two unique Marvel attractions one of them is a shooting attraction very similar to Buzz Lightyear's laser blast and then the other one is a simulator ride very similar to what we might know as Star Tours in the other Disney parks so if you're a big Marvel fan then definitely check out their version of Tomorrowland it's quite fun to see what Disney can do with Marvel outside of Avengers Campus another exclusive Hong Kong Disneyland attraction is the big grizzly mountain runaway minecarts I think that's the word for it it's a long name but it's their version of Big Thunder Mountain I would say is what they have instead of Big Thunder Mountain in Hong Kong Disneyland and it's located in the Grizzly Gulch area of Hong Kong Disneyland now as I mentioned it's very similar to Thunder Mountain so if you've been on Thunder Mountain you don't necessarily need to go on this but it is unique to Hong Kong Disneyland and it is fun the theming is obviously different it's got to do a lot with bears and it does actually go backwards at one point so bear that in mind it's not quite as intense as Expedition Everest in Animal Kingdom I wouldn't even say it's as intense as our version of Big Thunder Mountain in Paris I think our version is a lot faster and more thrilling however it's a great ride so if you do get a chance then go on it too on my most recent trip to Hong Kong Disneyland that ride was actually closed but on my first visit in 2019 I did get to go on it once and I enjoyed it but I still prefer Big Thunder Mountain I think Big Thunder Mountain will always be my favorite between the two also their version of Jungle Cruise is one that loads of people might recommend to you I don't particularly like it but that's just because I don't necessarily enjoy Jungle Cruise as an attraction anyway but if you're a huge Jungle Cruise fan then it might be worth checking out the one in Hong Kong Disneyland it's a little bit different it's probably actually a little bit more enjoyable than the US ones in my opinion because personally and please don't hate me <laughs> 
the main reason I don't necessarily like Jungle Cruise that much is because I just don't find the puns funny. I just don't enjoy the humour that much. I find it quite a boring attraction actually once you've been on it once. But the Hong Kong Disneyland one doesn't necessarily do puns. It's more about what you see. So it could be fun to go on it at least once if you want to. Now that's basically it for the exclusive unique attractions in Hong Kong Disneyland I would say. Of course they do have plenty of other rides. I mean Fancyland has all your classics like It's a Small World which is actually a good one. Dumbo, Philhar Magic, the Carousel. So there will be some other rides for you to enjoy as well as the ones that I mentioned but if you only have a short amount of time then definitely prioritize the ones that I just said. Another thing that's extremely huge in Hong Kong Disneyland though are the characters. I would actually go as far as saying the characters are a lot more popular than the rides. Currently, at the time of filming, the most popular ride in Hong Kong Disneyland is, of course, Frozen Ever After, because that's the most recent one. It is a very good dark ride with the animatronics. It's really, really fun. However, even that, which is meant to be the most popular ride in Hong Kong Disneyland right now, wouldn't get quite as long queues as the character meets. So if you love your character meets, then make sure to prioritize them and be prepared to stay in waiting queues for quite some time. I mean, an hour wait in Hong Kong Disneyland for characters is very normal. It's actually very similar to Disneyland Paris. In Disneyland Paris, guests really enjoy meeting characters as well and characters spend quite a lot of time with guests meaning that the queues can often be quite long except with Disneyland Paris the queues for rides are also long <laughs> whereas in Hong Kong if you're just a ride person honestly you don't really have to worry about much in terms of queuing but if you're a character person then be prepared to wait in line. Characters that are quite popular there are of course Duffy and Friends and now if you're not familiar with Duffy, Duffy is meant to be Mickey's teddy bear and he has a bunch of friends and they're very adorable and you see them a lot in the Asian Disney parks but particularly in Hong Kong I would say so much of their merchandise is actually based around Duffy and Friends and you can meet all the friends in Hong Kong Disneyland and Lena Bell is currently the most popular of the bunch. Her wait time I noticed was always above one hour in the park so I didn't wait for her, I didn't meet her. She was actually the only Duffy and Friends character that I haven't met yet because I wasn't prepared to wait over an hour for some random fox. She's pretty though, she's very cute and even if you don't wait for her to meet her you will probably see her around in some stage shows that they have and in the parade as well. Mickey's character meet area can also be quite popular. He normally meets at the top of Main Street so when you first enter Hong Kong Disneyland. They have a little gazebo as well, similar to Disneyland Paris, and Mickey tends to just meet in there, and his queues can get over an hour as well, because it's a perfect spot. It's one of the first things that people see when they enter the park, and you've got the backdrop of the castle too. And speaking of the castle, the castle is beautiful. Now, their castle is very unique, and it didn't used to be. Up until 2018, it was exactly the same as the one in Disneyland California. So they used to have the small, original Sleeping Beauty Castle version in Hong Kong Disneyland as well. However, Disney decided to do something that they haven't done in any of their Disney parks before which was to change the castle and I remember when it was announced everybody was like what like I couldn't believe that Disney would make that decision but it's actually very clever how they managed to do it so between 2018 and 2020 is I think when they did the renovations on the castle and they basically just built on top of what they already had with the Disneyland castle I remember when I visited Hong Kong Disneyland in 2019 I could see the construction going on and it looked really cool but I really enjoyed seeing the actual castle in its full glory now on my most recent trip and it is beautiful the castle of the magical dreams it's meant to represent all the different Disney princesses as well as Anna and Elsa too of course the lovely queens and you can see little details little nods to all the princesses on the castle it's actually really fun to look at and I would recommend if you're a big Disney fan and visiting Hong Kong Disneyland to spend at least five ten minutes just looking at the castle and noticing all the little different details about it inside the castle they have a shop which is quite cool it sells a lot of expensive things so very similar to the likes of Harrington's in Disneyland Paris or just a lot of like glass figurines things that are very expensive ornaments if you will or jewelry things like that they also do have a meet and greet area where you get to meet a princess inside the castle which I think is very fun now the princesses do rotate every day I met Jasmine on my most recent trip there it was really fun and the actual area inside is quite cute too it's nice that you can go inside the castle and meet a princess considering the castle is meant to be all about the princesses now we've talked about character meets we've talked about the attractions and rides let's talk about some of the other things that you can do in the parks shows they do have quite a few stage shows in Hong Kong Disneyland and they're all very very fun at the time of filming they've got I think three or four one of them is actually on the castle stage in front of the castle and it does tend to change seasonally. They also have a Lion King show, which is very similar to the Festival of the Lion King in Animal Kingdom, and a Moana show. The Moana show, I would say, you can skip. It's not too exciting. It's actually mainly for kids, I would say. But if you have some spare time, then check it out. Their best stage show in Hong Kong Disneyland, I would say, is Mickey and the Wondrous Book, which if you haven't checked out my Rainy Day at Hong Kong Disneyland vlog, then make sure you do because you can see little snippets of that show. It's a really fun show. It's basically Mickey, Goofy, and Olaf going through some different Disney stories that we all love. You get to see 
see different characters pop out of the books and the good thing about it again is that it's in both Cantonese and English and if you're a big fan of Happily Ever After the Disney song then they sing it in this stage show so yeah check that out overall though I wouldn't say the stage shows in Hong Kong Disneyland are better than the ones in Paris I think Paris is still at the top when it comes to stage shows in terms of parades unfortunately at the moment they don't actually have a full-blown parade which is sad I think they didn't bring it back after Covid I did get to see the real parade before Covid when I visited in 2019 but at the moment it's just a little cavalcade I wouldn't say you need to prioritize it at all don't spend time waiting for it at all please don't do that because it's legitimately just a cavalcade with some characters waving i mean it's cute and if you have kids who might want to see these characters from afar then it could be worth watching you just don't need to wait for it just go past it and give a little wave and then continue with your day hong kong disneyland did used to have paint the night though which is a nighttime parade which i was very lucky to get to experience in 2019 when i visited this park again this is a parade that unfortunately hasn't returned to hong kong disneyland yet however there are rumors that it might come back i think people are saying 2025 we might see the return of Paint the Night, the parade. And Paint the Night is actually a nighttime parade that started in Hong Kong Disneyland. It did, of course, make its way to Disneyland California, so a lot of people might be familiar with it because of Disneyland in California. However, its space, its home park, was always Hong Kong Disneyland. So if you are visiting Hong Kong Disneyland when the parade is on in the night, then definitely prioritize it. It's really, really fun. But if you're visiting now when the parade hasn't returned yet, then don't worry because they still do have an awesome nighttime show, and that is Momentous. Momentous is their projection fireworks show. It happens every single night. So Sometimes because of the weather, they might not use as much fireworks or any fireworks, but the projections will always happen. They also have a little water show that goes with it. It's a fantastic show, really beautiful. Again, if you want to see some snippets of it, then make sure to check out my vlog from my first evening in Hong Kong Disneyland, but it's definitely worth seeing. And the projections are just so beautifully detailed. They work so well with the castle because it was actually designed for this specific castle. It's a fantastic show and I wouldn't miss it. Very quickly, let's talk about Premier Access or the paid fast pass system in Hong Kong Disneyland because they do have that option available for you. You can go on the app on the day of your visit and purchase yourself a premier access for any of the rides that have them most of the popular rides do offer premier access and there's also an option on the app where you can get like a bundle it's really random how they bundle up some of the attractions sometimes it might be like two or three attractions and then like a show sometimes it might be like four very random attractions so i didn't quite enjoy that i found it quite confusing actually but if you just want to book them separately then you can do so i wouldn't say you need to though it's definitely not a park that requires premier access as much as the other parks i truly think the only one that might need it is frozen ever after and only if you're visiting during very busy times you can also book a premier access though for the nighttime show of course momentous that i just mentioned if you want to have an incredible view without waiting too long then get yourself that premier access for it or do you like i did and book yourself a dinner package so there is one option to get yourself a reserved spots for the nighttime show combined with a dinner if you eat at the explorers club restaurant in hong kong disneyland and the explorers club restaurant is a sit down slash buffet restaurant they call it a semi buffet basically your main course will be delivered to you you actually order it as if you're in a sit down restaurant but then for your starters and desserts you go through a buffet it's quite a fun experience i thought the restaurant was really nicely themed as well the food was also pretty nice so i would say not a bad option if you want to treat yourself one evening and have a sit down restaurant meal inside the park and then also go straight to to the fireworks without having to wait for a spot and have actually a really nice view so i would recommend that the price wasn't too bad either for what you got but if you don't want to do the meal side of things you can just book yourself a premier access for the nighttime show or just wait and watch it it's definitely not needed one thing i do want to mention about the premier access though is a little problem that i had with it so one day it was i think my last day actually the rainy day that i had in hong kong disneyland i was quite limited on time because that was the evening that i was going to transfer to actual hong kong so i wasn't going to be staying there the whole day and it was raining a lot so i didn't want to have to wait too long in queues because not all the queues are indoors in hong kong unfortunately some of them are a lot of them are actually but not all of them so i remember when i was on one of the rides i looked on the app and saw that space mountain hyperspace mountain a ride that i really wanted to do had i think a 40 or 35 minute wait this was also because it was raining so much so loads of people were going into the indoor attractions which space mountain is an indoor attraction and so i just thought let's just book a premier access for it to make sure that i don't even have to wait half an hour and i did it very quickly i basically clicked on space mountain on the app and purchased it however when i clicked on the space mountain option it did come up with a bundle it didn't seem to have one with just space mountain i think the way they do it and it's actually quite cheeky i would say when you click on any of the attractions on the app the first thing that pops up is the bundle ones because they're more expensive and because i was just in a hurry and i was you know being rained on i had a quick look and i was like you know what why not I don't mind if there's a couple of other rides in there. It's a little bit more expensive. It'll be fun to do some more rides as well. However... <laughs> The bundle that I ended up purchasing to be able to go on Space Mountain actually had nothing to do with Space Mountain. So Space Mountain wasn't even included in it. So I think that's a fault in their app. I don't like it. You really have to look 
add to the app and make sure that you're reading everything. It's not as straightforward as if you just click on an attraction that you want to book a premier access for and then purchase it. It's not like that, unfortunately. So that was a that was a mistake that I did. Basically, I clicked on Space Mountain on the app, saw that it came up with an option to get like a bundle with a few more attractions as well, and I was like, why not? Because I'm happy to do Space Mountain as well as a couple of other rides. However, it turned out that what I had booked, what I had paid for, didn't even include Space Mountain. It was like the two Marvel rides in Tomorrowland, which honestly very rarely get long queues. Honestly, it was like between five to ten minutes throughout the day, and then the Grizzly roller coaster, which was completely closed throughout my stay, as well as another attraction that was either closed or I'd already done, or it just again was one that didn't need premier access. So I was really sad. I have to be honest, I was so sad. I actually went to Space Mountain and, and spoke to a cast member about this to see if they could help me out at all. They didn't. Cast members there. I would say whilst overall the cast members are very nice and friendly, they're not as you know willing to help. I would say as perhaps some of the other cast members, and I'll get to that later on. But yeah, obviously it was fine because I ended up just queuing 20 minutes for Space Mountain and it didn't matter but I was just really sad about the fact that I'd paid money for two attractions that were closed so I couldn't even do them or two attractions that didn't even need the premier access because they had very short queues it was very annoying <laughs> I'll be honest it was the one time that I really got annoyed in Hong Kong Disneyland because I felt that it was it was the app's problem really I think the app should have been a bit more clear about what I was purchasing of course it was on me as well I should have paid more attention I should have read everything but you know you want an app that's easy to use especially when you're in the parks already because that's when you can book things you don't want to be clicking on an attraction and then be taken to a bunch of other bundles that you really are not interested in like if you're clicking on a particular attraction on the app then that's surely the one that you want to buy a premier access for so that I found that quite annoying I did go to City Hall later and spoke to a cast member there again he wasn't overly friendly or overly helpful he was very much like well this is this is how it is and again it's fine it's how they do it there I appreciate it I respect it however after some back and forth and I wasn't angry I was just explaining to them about how I found the app confusing how I thought it was a little bit weird that they're selling something for two rides that are currently closed and not at all the one that I actually wanted to even though I had clicked on that one it was very weird so in the end he did allow me to have a premier access for one of the other rides that wasn't in the bundle that I'd purchased but it was for Dumbo and Dumbo isn't one that I necessarily needed a premier access for but at the time of filming it had like 20 minute wait so I was like why not I took it I appreciated the gesture but what I did learn that day and it was actually on my last day in Hong Kong Disneyland because it's the only time I wanted to purchase a premier access is that if you're planning to do that then make sure to read everything like be very clear about what you're purchasing because the website can be a little bit confusing and they try to sell you the bundle ones instead of the single ones because they want to make more money speaking about other ways Disney tries to make quite a bit of money in Hong Kong Disneyland photo pass so of course they do also have photo pass in Hong Kong Disneyland and they do actually have quite a few photographers around the park as well pretty easy to use they've got their own app for their version of photo pass and it's very similar to photo pass in Paris or in the US parks if you use them you just get a card and it's got a little you know spark code on it you can scan it you can give it to the photographers they'll put your photos on there and they also do have little areas in the park where you can go and speak to actual people if you have any problems with your photo pass so don't worry at all very easy to use however you can only get them per day so that's something that I found quite frustrating as well and in my opinion it does bring down the value of photo pass a little bit unless you have one day where you're thinking of just doing a lot of photo pass photos and getting all the ride photos and maybe meeting a bunch of characters then I wouldn't say it's worth it because you can only book them per day and that ends up being quite expensive because I think per day it came out to about 35 pounds per day which for one day absolutely fine but if you're doing multiple days because you can't get them in the bundle unfortunately it will add up and even though they do have quite a few photographers around it's definitely more than I've seen in Paris it's still not nearly as much as in Disneyland California or Walt Disney World so it's still not a lot of photographers another quite annoying thing about the photo pass system in Hong Kong Disneyland is that in their character buffets because they've got character buffets in the hotels the official Disney hotels so the Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel Explorers and Hollywood Hotel they will have little character breakfast and meals and characters are there you can meet them I didn't find them actually coming up to the table as much it's more of a they're just there you can go up to meet them but they do have the characters there and with the character meals they also have photographers which is quite unique to Hong Kong Disneyland so when the character comes to you they normally have a character attendant as well as an actual photo pass person you don't have to get the photo pass photo if you don't want to but the option is there and if you're with a big family or if they know there's loads of you then it will be nice to have that photo of all of you professionally taken 
However, the photos taken in the buffet restaurants in the hotels are not going to be included in the price of the photos that you take in the park, which is so annoying and ridiculous in my opinion. So for instance, if in one day you take a bunch of photos in the park, you want to collect your ride photos, you meet some characters in the park, but then you also have a meal in the evening in your hotel, in your Disney hotel with the characters. And if you want to get all your photos combined, you can't. You have to purchase two photo passes, one for the hotel ones, one for the ones in the park. It is ridiculous. I would not recommend it. It's not worth it. Cast members are happy to take photos on your own phone if you just ask them, so don't bother <laughs> with it. It's it's just frustrating. I don't think it makes sense. Speaking of character buffets, let's just talk about food in Hong Kong Disneyland for a little bit. Now, I found the food to be quite good. I didn't think it was extraordinary when it comes to snacks especially. Everything that I tried was fine. There wasn't a single snack option that I didn't like, but there was also nothing that I was blown away by. So I don't think their food slash snack game is any better than Paris's personally. I think they're very much on par actually. So with Paris as well, a lot of the food is just fine. There's nothing very overwhelmingly amazing in my opinion and that's what I would say you should expect from Hong Kong as well They have different options to Paris because it's a different country. It's a different culture But the food quality seems to be very similar to Paris's They don't actually have a lot of table service restaurants. So in the park they actually only have two I believe so one of them is the Explorers Club the semi buffet Which you can also combine with you know a reserved spot for momentous their nighttime show if you wish to Or you can just go to that restaurant without the combination of the package and it will be a little bit cheaper But they also do have another restaurant on Main Studio say I think it's called something like Waltz or something I did go there one night it was quite nice they had things like steak and American food my butter on my steak was Mickey shaped which I thought was very adorable so that's an option for you if you want a table service only about two of them inside the parks from what I could see the rest will all be in the hotels which is why I say it might be worth visiting all the hotels if you're staying there for a few nights and if you don't want to constantly rely on quick service then maybe go to some of the buffet restaurants inside the hotels in terms of quick service options again I thought most of the things were fine and they had a good variety of things quite a lot of Asian dishes but also some American and Western dishes as well so don't worry one question that I got asked is will I be able to survive if I'm a picky eater and yes I think you will they have things like burgers and chicken nuggets you know chips fried fish I think a lot of people do enjoy fish and chips so you can definitely get that in Hong Kong Disneyland and even in their table service restaurants as well you should be able to get some westernized cuisine too however from my experience alone I would say that they didn't do the best job of the American slash westernized food so I had a burger there from Tomorrowland. They have basically a quick service there, very similar to Cafe Hyperion. And you can see that in my food tour of Hong Kong Disneyland. And I found the burger to be very dry, just not very flavorful compared to burgers that I've had in the West or in America. However, I also had an Asian dish in Hong Kong Disneyland at one of their quick services. And that was fantastic and one that I would recommend. So they do what they know very well. So Asian dishes, their own cuisine, seafood, they're very good at, but American food, they're not the best that it's not bad don't get me wrong it's edible you'll still enjoy it it's just not the best thing that you can get in hong kong disneyland a few more things to touch on now the merchandise in hong kong disneyland is very fun very different to what you might see in the u.s parks or in disneyland paris so be prepared it's very out there it's a bunch of plushes and of course duffy and friends feature in the merchandise a lot so if you don't like very over the top disney stuff then you might be disappointed by the merch there however they do have a lot of fun things and if you want to just embrace it all then you'll find a bunch of really adorable things in hong kong disneyland shops another thing that I got asked quite often is Wi-Fi they do have Wi-Fi both in the park and also in the official Disney hotels however the Wi-Fi isn't great it's not very strong it's also not very reliable it does cut off every now and again you do also have to sign in I think almost every day one cool thing that I noticed when I was there though every single time that I would sign into the Wi-Fi if I gave them my email then I would get a code to get 5% off one of the merchandise items which I thought was quite fun and a way to kind of get you to purchase more because five percent off is not a lot and I think it was five percent only if you spent above a certain amount I only really made the most of that five percent discount once but that one time was cool and at least it makes the having to sign in constantly a little bit less annoying but I would say if you really really need wi-fi then maybe worth just having data on your phone or perhaps booking pocket wi-fi with you just not relying on the wi-fi in the parks or the hotel because whilst they're okay and they're good they're not phenomenal so just bear that in mind in terms of payment in the parks that's another question that i was asked quite a bit they more or less accept most credit cards and debit cards i mean i had no problem with my credit card i did have some cash on me just as a backup but i never used it inside the parks i just used my card they do also use a system called alipay it's basically an app that you can download and then put your credit card or debit card information on there and then you can use that when you're there that's something that i would say you absolutely need for shanghai disneyland which i'm going to talk about in a future video but for hong kong whilst alipay is an option 
you can also use your credit cards absolutely fine and whilst we're on the topic of money i would say that hong kong desert land in terms of the prices was the most similarly priced to the western parks the hotels were still cheaper the park tickets were cheaper however merchandise and food i found to be very similarly priced to what we used to pay in disney world disneyland california and disneyland paris merchandise prices were a little bit lower though which was nice another thing that i should have probably touched on earlier is the fact that the park hours generally aren't quite as long as again the u.s parks at disneyland paris or tokyo or shanghai even when i was there the park would open at 10 30 a.m every day and would close at 9 p.m so not even a full 12 hours even though i was there basically at the end of spring early summer months so bear that in mind and as i mentioned by staying in a disney hotel you don't really get that benefit of getting early access to the parks unfortunately i believe it's the only disney park at the moment that doesn't give you that in most of the other disney parks if you stay on site you will get some sort of extra benefit of being able to go in the parks early for extra magic time or maybe staying in a little bit late for extended hours i think in hong kong disneyland they used to have that but since covid that hasn't come back correct me if i'm wrong if you really do want to get there an hour early though you can do so you have to pay for it it costs about 25 pounds and i did it one day only on my day when i wanted to explore world of frozen and it's so funny because the cast member in my hotel literally said it's not worth it unless you want to go to frozen ever after and i said that's the main reason i'm here so i did end up purchasing it for that one day it allowed me into the park one hour early so at 9 30 instead of 10 30 in the morning and i did get to basically walk onto the ride however later on in the evening just before the park was closing the ride was also a walk on there so again i don't think you need it if i go again i'm not going to purchase that one hour extra thing but because it was only 25 pounds i thought it was fine for that one day and if you really want to do it too it could be worth it if you just want to have the park you know a lot more empty and feel like you're kind of there on your own could be worth booking that last but not least i have some questions about guest behavior and actually shout out to derek derek is another fellow youtuber content creator who did a similar trip to me not so long ago he went to hong kong and shanghai disneyland and he's currently uploading his vlogs too so shout out to him i'll leave his link down below if you guys want to check him out but yeah in terms of guest behavior in hong kong disneyland i found it to be overall quite nice you know i found most people to be very polite obviously most people do speak and understand english which is nice it's not a very busy park compared to the other disney parks in fact i think hong kong disneyland is the least visited of all the disney parks out there that doesn't mean it doesn't get busy at times i mean people still go it's still a very popular theme park however compared to the other disney parks it just doesn't get as many visitors because of that it makes it quite an enjoyable experience it's a very chilled vibe i would say overall people love their photos there so you'll be seeing loads of people taking photos around the park just bear that in mind also whilst we're on the topic of photos selfie sticks are very much allowed in hong kong disneyland something that i was quite surprised at because in all the other disney parks i believe you can't take them in i mean sometimes you might see people sneaking them into the parks but they're not actually allowed to be in the parks hong kong disneyland almost everybody had one either a full-on selfie stick or really long tripods and they would use it for the fireworks they would just like put them up they would use it to take photos of themselves in front of the castle i mean you just see selfie sticks and long tripods everywhere so i did find that a little bit weird that you were allowed to take them so easily so bear that in mind actually if you want to take a selfie stick with you you're absolutely allowed i don't think they should be allowed in theme parks personally but i didn't have much of a problem with them either whilst i was there so you know as long as i guess people and guests use them effectively and respectfully maybe it's fine and yeah overall i did find the guest behavior to be quite respectful and polite and easy to navigate the only thing i will say is that forget about personal space in hong kong disneyland i mean both hong kong disneyland and shanghai specifically which i'm going to get to like i said in a future video shanghai is a whole other ball game but even in hong kong disneyland like i mentioned people love taking their photos and they don't care if to get that photo they need to be very close to you like they just they're not they don't seem bothered at all about being close to you and that's just something that you have to anticipate and accept because it's their culture it might be weird for us as westerners going somewhere like that because you know i'm used to disneyland paris and in Disneyland Paris if somebody's taking a photo people make sure to give them space or if they accidentally get in their photo they would apologize you'd be able to actually get a little space to yourself to get a photo if you want to I mean don't get me wrong there'll be people in the background but in Hong Kong Disneyland there'll be people literally right next to you <laughs> especially like at very significant moments so at the end of momentous a nighttime show loads of people want to take photos in front of the castle or right next to the castle and you'll be getting loads of people right next to you who just don't mind like they don't mind if you're in their photo they don't mind if they're in your photo they just don't care about personal space so bear that in mind but yeah overall i really enjoyed hong kong disneyland it's a really beautiful park like i said small park only one park no disney village or downtown disney or disney springs the least attended of all the disney parks worldwide however 
still definitely worth a visit. It's got some unique attractions like Mystic Manor, as I mentioned. The castle is now very unique to their park. The nature side of Hong Kong makes it a really beautiful park, in my opinion, as well. And it's a very chill park. So I love Hong Kong Disneyland. And I hope that if you visit, this video has been helpful for you. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments down below or follow me on Instagram and ask them there. I'll try my absolute best to answer them. Of course, I'm no expert. I've only been to Hong Kong Disneyland twice, but I just wanted to make this video to share my experience of visiting Hong Kong Disneyland two times in hopes that it might help you if you're hoping to go, which I think you should. It's a beautiful park. It's definitely worth visiting. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe for more videos like this, or if you haven't checked out my Hong Kong playlist, I'll leave it down below. There'll be more videos coming from my Asian trip. We're going to Shanghai Disneyland and Tokyo. So all of that is coming. Huge shout out to my lovely Patreon and YouTube members as well. You guys are amazing. And the link is always down below if you want to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.